And welcome back to the show for all things community, charity and fundraising taking place in Kent, Surrey and Sussex. We nearly didn't come back on air then actually because we're just so passionate about community things and, and stuff. So I've been busy chatting to my guest, Mandy Kwai Villander, who's um, who's a community warden with KCC. So now, Mandy, you're going to yeah. swap hats. So okay. now Thank co-hosting you. over. Now uh, we want to pick your brains about what it is that you're doing. Um, so if you could, because community wardens, they're not such a new thing in our local communities, no, are they? No. They're, they're a Kent initiative um, and they were set up in the early 2000s um, and they they work differently to other organisations in that they are uh, based very much in the actual local community. So we, we have areas that we work and we, we're based in and we are sort of a uniformed presence in that area. Um, we're not enforcement officers, um, right? But we we work really closely with uh, agencies, organisations, um, and we are the people that can bridge the gap. Basically, excellent. I have to say, you got good support. There's been a tweet mm. that's come in from Jack Gibley, and he's uh, he's saying he absolutely loves the warden service and what they have done for his local community is incredible. He hasn't mentioned which um, his local community is, so mm. there are people out there who who are aware of community wardens, but of course, at the same time. There are so many people out there who don't quite understand what your role That's is. That's right. I mean, I do. Uh, unfortunately, I do spend um, time explaining who we are and what we do because, uh, I mean, we are based only in Kent. Um, uh, there's not, um, there's not as there was before, uh, the Bobby on the beat. So we are, we we build relationships, we build trust with local organisations, venues. Um, we work very closely with the parish council. Um, we report crime as well. We send intel reports to the police, trading standards and such. Um, but we pum- we're we part of the community safety unit. So we're, we're also there to support. Um, if there's an emergency, we can be there to help support. Okay. Uh, we work really closely with other services and agencies. We, we, we spend time building relationships with them. So it's a two-way street. So across um, Kent, how yeah. many how many wardens are there across Kent? Well, at the moment there's about seventy. So we, we've just had a recruitment, um, and I work in the um, Canterbury coastal area of the Canterbury and Swale team. Right. Um, so I, I'm actually based in Hearn and Broomfield, but I've got colleagues who work in places such as Sturry and Whitstable and Greenhill. Um, so it's quite a rural area generally. But but I mean I also have a colleague who works over in. Um, uh, she and S. So okay, we all work really differently. Uh, it's all based on the needs of the community. We all come from different backgrounds, and we all have different skills. Uh, everyone does a fantastic job in their own way, depending on what their community needs. So when you went in, because you've been in the role for a year now, yeah, what attracted you to to actually apply for for being a community warden? Did you know? A lot about what the role was before you applied or you know did someone That's a say really good question Nora. <laughs> <laughs> well um, I mean as you know I was the engagement officer for Asia Stanick before this so yeah. I had um, I had experience of multi-agency working and I saw what a fantastic job a lot of the agencies did I did also work alongside some of the Thanet community wardens um, and prior to that I was a road safety instructor for about 10 years. Oh, wow. Um, and then I was uh, part of the learning team at Turner Contemporary for about um, for about six or seven years as well. So I've got lots of experience with working for quite high-profile projects yeah. and very much community-based things. So um, when the job became available, I just thought that would be a really good fit for the, the experience that I've had previously. Yeah. But, but also I just was really drawn to seeing what my colleagues had had achieved beforehand and and the the wide range that was involved in the job you're very much um trusted to to do the right thing and to do the best so i i really like that aspect of it and from your experience from uh you know sort of getting to know all your other colleagues over the years mm. and also for for um or over the year and and for the contact you've had prior to to become an award in yourself do you think everyone comes from sort of similar backgrounds that they've had like sort of roles, um, you know, doing community activities beforehand or is it really just sort of a complete variety? Of- no, it's, it's definitely a complete variety. So 
Um, some of my colleagues are, are ex-police, ex-army, um, or, uh, or ex-prison. Um, okay. Um, but also very much um, teaching staff, um, people that have, um, well, all sorts of different backgrounds. Yeah. Um, they've okay. just got to be the right person, basically. So you go through um, quite a stringent uh, process when you get the job of assessment. Um, okay. And you are assessed on your personality as well, how you're going to deal with certain situations um, okay. and how approachable you are as a person. The do community. they do those like, so, yeah, those sort of tests that you've got, you know, sort of um, multiple choice questions and it tests sort of where your, how your mind works. It's not, you know, like the, no, like some employers do do. I know up in the city I used to do those. I can't remember what they're, what they're called. It's been that long since I've been <laughs> employed no, by it's, anybody it's, apart from me. It's very practical. So basically, you, you are in a room with, with other candidates and uh, it's all about having tasks where you've got to work together as teams. You've, you've got to, it's all, it's all dependent on how you work together, how you discuss things, how you problem solve. Okay. Um, and it's, it's quite important that you have good experience. It's not that important to have experience in certain things, to be honest. I think the personality side of it's probably more yeah. so. But I guess everyone, you know, the one sort of common denominator is the fact that everybody is really passionate about making communities a better place yeah, for everyone who lives and, and works within them. Yeah, definitely. I'd say that was that was the case. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm sort of fortunate that I, I know a couple of uh, community wardens in, in my own locality in Edenbridge and, and Westrum. And, and, you know, mm. they I see the great job that they do. And I see mm. also the different things that they do because they're responding to that individual community need. Now, I also see them out and about everywhere, you know, yeah. sort of because I think that's um, one of the key things is actually engaging with all of those organisations and community groups. So mm. when you started, oh, you had a big task to, to raise your profile, to let everyone know that, you know, I'm, I'm the new warden in town and, you know, so I'm the, I'm the, I'm the go-to person for you. So what, what sort of activities did you do and, and sort of where are your key contacts? You know, are there any sort of contacts that you made that you knew then would filter down to, to help you do your job by, by raising your profile for? That's a fantastic question again, Laura. <laughs> yeah, um, so um, it, it was quite important in the first six months to climb a time up acclimatise myself to my new area to, um, as you say, be as visible as possible because our presence there is a reassurance as, as much as anything. Um, but also I made it, I made it my, my mission to sort of make, build relationships with, say, the, the manager of the local doctor's surgery, uh, the, the local schools, um, the parish council, the church, uh, Age UK, um, but also we've got a new store that opened, a big new Sainsbury's. So I've built a relationship with the manager there. Okay. She's been really supportive in some of the uh, the events that I've organised. Yeah. Um, and just, as you say, being as visible as, and, and as a, attainable as possible. So everyone has my telephone number if they need it. They've got my uh, email contact. Yeah. Um, so that's quite interesting, actually, because, you know, I always think of sort of the community as, as those running the community like like the councils like the the church groups the schools and all of that but you mentioned you know actually making you know sort of acquaintances with the manager at Sainsbury's mm. is another key thing because that's a massive employer mm. um you know every, loads of people go there so it's it's important again so yeah businesses well, as well as that's right because um I recently did um I I partnershiped with um the engagement officer of Age UK Caroline and we organized a community swap event over at Green Hill um, and Sainsbury's were a big supporter of that. They helped with the refreshments. They they sent a couple of members of staff. A they, community swap. Yeah, yeah, so it was what fantastic. Is... So we did it at the church hall. Yeah, um, and we invited people to come along with clothes and toys um, and accessories that they didn't want anymore. Oh, okay. We set it up like a big shop basically, yeah. and then we just gave people bags as they arrived and just said, "Help yourself." Um, oh, and it was okay. all free. So. We what we did was we charged money for um, raffle tickets. We got fantastic prizes from local businesses, um, and a minimal amount for refreshments, which were supplied by Sainsbury's. Um, and we made uh, a couple of hundred pounds for the church and Age UK. Oh, excellent! Um, but actually, people were able to come in and just get a whole new wardrobe and, and a 
box of toys if they wanted to and it wouldn't cost anything and that was really successful absolutely brilliant oh i think we should be having more of those all over the place Mm -hmm. what an excellent idea and you've showed another benefit from befriending the big supermarket in town is Mm -hmm. having a supplier of refreshments when you're doing events like this that's (laughs) right but also recently i had um a community uh uh, community safety takeover day there she we we had it as a venue so okay. organized an event where we had uh rnli police um kent fire and rescue coast guard victim support neighborhood watch um street pastors road safety unit and ourselves wow. and we we had a, a big presence up there with vehicles and we were sort of be able to talk to people that came in and that was a really successful event so who actually called in that that event did you that was me call, yeah. yeah gosh yeah. so as well as doing your community warden role you're also organizing these big events well it, it, <laughs> it's just a case of meeting people and, and utilizing the relationships really and, yeah and giving things a try i think it's, no i think that that's brilliant and do yeah. you is there only one community warden in, in your area or do you do you share that with somebody else? So each area has their own warden. Um, sometimes we double up if we're in similar areas or we're quite close to each other. If we go and do visits, so we get referrals from people like the police, um, NHS and also the social services department. Um, and we are asked to go and do reassurance and welfare visits and checks on people. Okay. Um, so we do double up and we do work with colleagues for things like that. We report back um, because we know the community, we yeah. know the areas. So we're the go-to people for those visits. Um, it sounds like the, the role is quite an exceptionally vast it role. It is. Yeah. Um, for for one person to do. Um, so I guess if, if you were to sort of selling the role of a, a community warden to uh, to prospective uh, new new people, mm. what would you say are the sort of, say, the top three things that, that you do as a community warden? Well, um, we, we have um, volunteer support wardens and I would also, I would always say if anyone wants to have a go at being a community warden and there's an opportunity in their area to be a volunteer support warden, do get in touch with the, the service to, to find out more. Because I, uh, I love the fact that we work closely with the other organisations and services. So I report crime, I send intel reports into the police um, and trading standards. We help with... Um, scams so we go and visit people that have been victims of scams and doorstep crime um so i really do like to do talks on things like road safety scam awareness um keeping personal safety that sort of thing so those types of things are really nice for for us to do you don't have to do all those if you don't feel confident standing up and talking to don't you have to if you're doing um like you get a certificate to show that you you can teach about scams is that right i've seen some some people i know they they have um, a certification that they can well we we do a lot of training <clears throat> we have accreditation for for certain things we're police accredited so we the only thing that we have um, powers on are things like directing traffic um and and taking people's details in in a sort of daily diary for for various different inquiries um but certain yeah, we we have certification for certain things yeah. that we do training for. I mean, I'm I'm also a dementia champion, so I can do sessions, information sessions for dementia friends. Oh, excellent! Um, but but we work quite closely with the road safety department and training standards. So. Uh, you know anything like that we've, yeah. we've got good links with those so we can we can help okay um so have, have you done a lot of um dementia awareness sessions i'm so passionate about making more and more people aware about um about dementia because uh it's those um, vulnerable people in our communities mm. that just with a little bit of understanding about mm. it can give them a better experience of, of living within their own community as well well, I've only just done the dementia oh, okay. champion training, so I've yet to do my first information session. I am a dementia friend. Well, um, make sure you let us know so we can promote your uh, your first session as well, so we can have it okay. full to, to brimming for you, and uh, you know you'll be starting getting getting more dementia friends in that area. That's brilliant. It's a, it's a fantastic concept because it gives people um, a heads up on what people who live with dementia experience, but it also gives them a much better understanding that you can live well with dementia. And it just gives you um, a warmer understanding generally. It's, it's quite good for people that either work or live with people who, yeah. who are living with dementia. So would you would you say that like every community warden 
does the same sort of skills or do you think you know that not not every community warden would be a dementia friend or a dementia champion but they might mm. they might focus on other things it's- absolutely absolutely so um we're, we're all dementia friends we all do that as part of our training okay um but again like i said de- dependent on the needs of our community um some of some of our communities um have a high level of need for things like candy social behavior uh, things like littering, fly tipping, um, troubled youths. Um, there, there's lots of different reasons why we all work very differently. We've all got our strengths in different areas. So um, some of us are dementia champions, um, but we, we work as a team. So anyone yeah. else in the team who need, would need that service would be able to come to me if they needed to. So would you say, because you're you're out and about so much and you're such a, you know, you have uh, worked up and you've got a high presence in the area, mm. you've kind of replaced what would have originally been like the Bobby on the Beat mm. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, but you, yeah, you do you ever feel vulnerable when you're out and about in the community? And you might have to deal with, you know, antisocial mm. behaviour, which uh, can be quite intimidating as well. Another fantastic question. Um I don't in my community. I can understand that there might be some areas where there might be some concerns. We, we're lone workers, but we are very, very well supported. We have our team leader who uh, is in constant contact with us. We're in contact with um, our colleagues and we do have um, a security device on us that okay. we can use, yeah. which I won't talk no, too no, much no. about. No, no, no. No, of course not. Um, but, you know, there are, there are, uh, there's a need to be sensible and there's a need to have, be able to self um regulate what we're doing and keeping ourselves safe so and it's not like you would get a phone call because there's a big riot going on you know on the seafront and they'd expect you just to turn up Mm. there no one would ever put you your you know sort of your your bosses would never expect that from you i guess nor nor would the organizations that you build those close links with because you got to be realistic and um Mm. you know think about well-being you know as well at the end Mm. of the day Well, I mean, we're there to support the police, Kent Fire and Rescue, so they would probably be the go-to agencies that would be called in on something like that. But if there's a major uh, emergency, say, for example, a flood or something like Operation Stack, Oh yeah, somewhere where there's a, a need for uh, another agency to come in and assist or, you know, we might even be there first, so we might help to set up something that would bring in other agencies. Um, we train uh, incident liaison training, you know, all sorts of different things like that. We are covered. So you would be almost, um, and then you got the the community um, responders as well, mm. um, who are all over the all over the country yeah, now. Yeah. The network. So yeah. are you sort of all linked in with yeah, that group as well? Right. Yeah. So we're part of the community safety unit. So if there's a, a major incident, then the the command at the top will will filter down through. Um, yeah involving us it's a sort of multi-agency operation um that's based in the council and uh, it's it's all very it's all very organized and you know anything that that happens was thrown at them they're they're in a position to be able to uh, coordinate all of the different agencies including us so we would be there as well to help with community now one of the things that people often get confused because they're i guess there's there's a lot of crossover but there's also um places uh, where the roles are different but from the community wardens the volunteer support officers and the PCSOs so our mission was to get people to understand Mm. the difference so can you try and explain sort of I guess with um, that how they how they do differ from each other please Mandy Certainly. So we, we do work very closely with the PCSOs and our, our roles are quite similar in a lot of ways. Back in the early days, the community wardens and the PCSOs did used to start their training together. OK. So they are the police version of us in a way. Um, they are the community support, community support officers for the police. And we are the community support wardens for uh, KCC, Kent County Council. Um, We both work very much in the community. We build relationships with the individuals in the community um, and we attend local events and and such. We do things together such as things like Operation Heron, which is on Herne Bay Seafront, for example, um, and that's to have a presence when the children are off school early evening just to make sure everyone's safe. Yeah. Um, 
And the difference between us really is that we're non-police, they are police. Um, we do have, like I said, the police power that we have is around directing traffic and taking people's details in uh, our daily diaries. Um, I think the, I'm right in saying that their power is around potentially taking alcohol off of people if they need to. Um, right. But the, their role isn't specifically around police as in getting people arrested and, and, and such, but they do help with things like inquiries, going to visit people if they need to. So, for example, if I have somebody that I know in my area who has been the victim of um, a doorstep crime, if someone's been knocking on their door trying to get money off of them, um, I will send a, a report in and the police, probably a PCSO, will go over and actually take further details from them okay. and, and escalate it through the police channels. And that'll be like then on the case file yes, more than it what it is that you you're yes, put into it. That's okay. Right. Yeah, so it, yeah. it yeah, so they're 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 the sort of the the, the um starting point of that chain yes, that that's escalate right. like yeah. you are, but it would go yeah. in the other direction. Yeah. Okay. Um and the um the support uh community wardens the volunteer support community wardens um they're very similar to us but they are as it as it suggests they're volunteers yeah. so it's a fantastic opportunity if somebody wants to get some experience for, for, for a future job uh if they want to uh do something that's helping the local community and get involved in local community uh, initiatives and things. And certain areas have opportunities for volunteer wardens and it's probably best to get onto the website to find out the areas that have okay. positions available. How many hours are expected then for the volunteer? Well, as, uh, as far as I know, it's whatever they can whatever they can do. So, so, for example, in our team, we've got Nick and he works weekends as a volunteer warden when he can because he has a full-time job. Um, and we also have Roger, who was a volunteer warden, has now very fortunately been employed as one of our colleagues as um, a, a full-time community warden. OK. Um, so if it's something that you want to go down that route, it's a really good opportunity and experience. And they work alongside us quite quite closely. So they the volunteer yeah, so they they report into the council, not to the not to the police. That's then, right, yes. Yeah. So. so they're part of our team and they report to our our team leader like we do so your role is it like monday to friday nine to five it's flexible um so as long as we work the hours that we need so it can be any time from about seven thirty in the morning till 10 o'clock at night um we have out of hours after about six o'clock um and if we need for example if there's a fun day or something that's going on at the weekend then we just um we work the weekend yeah. and then have a day off in the week oh okay um yeah and also i mean some of the activities that um you were telling me that you get up to you know in your role and, and mm. particularly with the sort of uh, raising your profile which is you know all to do with your your networking abilities mm. um you you probably see more nativity plays than anyone <laughs> else don't you <laughs> I know. I, last Christmas, I, I just sat with a big grin on my face because I went to about four or five nativity plays in in the Hearn area with the <laughs> infants and the juniors, and it was and and you get invited for a lot of these things because you're a reassurance and you're a guest for them and they they respect you because you're a local professional, um, and and you know I do a lot of things with the schools and um, I'll tell you a bit about that in a minute, but but certainly. A lot of the local church organisations and everything, they always invite you. Yeah, so there's always plenty of opportunity for tea and cake. Lots of tea and cake, <laughs> but but more importantly, lots of community engagement as well. So when you turn up, cause obviously with the community engagement, getting involved in the schools, when you turn yeah. up at the school, and mm. let's say you're at a sort of... Um, a, an infant school or, or a the very young primary school. Mm. You can tell I don't have children, you know, they're just small people. <laughs> and uh, so what do they normally, what's their first reaction when they see you? What do they think you do? Well, first of all, they usually think you're police. Um, uh, I've got a fantastic relationship with Hearn Infants and Hearn Juniors. And so far, I've, I've done a couple of uh, presentations, uh, road safety presentations. So I used to be a road safety instructor. Of course. Um, with the older children, we've talked about riding bikes, we've talked about going up to secondary school and being safe. Um, with the younger children, I've talked about who I am and that I'm a safe person for them to be able to come and talk to me if they're a bit worried about That's anything, really which important. is quite important because they need to be able to, if they're in light of things that have happened recently in my area with, with people going missing and children going missing, yeah. um, it's, it's important for a child to know and recognise a uniformed presence 
as being a, a potential safe person to go and speak to if they need to. And they they get to know me as a person as well. Yeah. Um, so they're always very excited when I go and see them. I've got a fantastic um, invitation if I want to, to go and have lunch with the children uh, in the dinner hall at the juniors. And get served um, by a dinner lady. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. yeah. So oh. I do that sometimes. I hang out with them in the playground. I go yeah. down to the crossing in the morning with the crossing lady and I chat to them as they get to That's school. brilliant. Um, but I did also do a road safety competition with them as well, which was really, really successful. Um, we, we highlighted the fact that there was an issue in Mill Lane, which is one of the busy roads that comes off the Thanet Way, that yeah. there was uh, an element of speeding. Right. Um, certainly at school drop-off and pick-up times. And unfortunately, I think uh, a lot of that, no disrespect, is probably down to parents who are a bit, in a bit of a rush to get the, the children dropped off. Yeah. But there's quite a lot of areas of that road that haven't got a path and it's it's quite treacherous at times. So so we decided that it would be quite good for us to do a competition with the school where everyone in the, the, the junior school designed some signs. Oh, OK. Um, we had a short list of about 12. Um, all of those were um, displayed in the reception area of the Sainsbury's store for about two weeks. Um and two were chosen to be made into uh, road signs that are going to be permanently placed in Mill Lane. Oh, brilliant. Um, that the, the children have actually designed and the whole sign is going to be the image the child, the children did. So hopefully that will remind people as they're coming yeah. backwards and forwards from the school that the children are actually asking them to, to and consider it, their safety. Yeah, because it makes the children more aware of, of what's going on around them. Now, yeah. We are, because I know, um, and I really want to hear about it, but uh, one of the things, um, so we've got about three, about four minutes left. So one of the things I really want to find out about is um, you do get some flexibility. So you, you do sort of your set role and you have your key objectives that you need yeah. to achieve. Um, you know, you do all your networking. So you've got the contacts in the community. Um you do an awful lot, you know, fitting in all these nativity plays and Chris Dingle services, but you still get given the scope mm. to be able to, um, I guess, identify things that you think are going to work. So mm. you can go sort of outside of, um, obviously you get support from from your bosses and everything, but to do yeah. things that you, you want to do that you think are going to make a difference in the community, your own projects. So what sort of things are you looking at? So you've been, you know, in mm. this role for a year now. What have you noticed and what, what are you looking at implementing to make a difference? Well, there's a, there's a lot of work being done around social prescribing and helping communities be um, better with their well-being. Um, so I've worked quite closely with the the surgery to set up help set up things that are going to help with the patient well-being, but also the well-being of the local community. Um, so I, I organised a pop-up cafe which is in the gardens of the surgery once a month. It's run by a fantastic organisation um, called Rural Kent. Um, and it, it's a coffee caravan that comes out. It's fantastic. They've got comfortable seating, an awning, and lots of information, but it's free tea and cake, basically, yeah. for the community, and that's once a month, and, and that's in conjunction with the surgery. Okay. Um, also, um, it's quite important, I think, to really utilise your contact. So anyone that I meet that I think is going to be quite a useful contact, thinking quite selfishly in that way, yeah. so I, I make a note of them. Um, so I've been working quite closely with a fantastic lady in Anne, called Anne, in Broomfield at the church up there. Um, we've uh, set up and she's helping to run um, a really lovely art group up there. Okay. Um, and they week once a week. We've got an art workshop coming up with a local artist called David Redfern, who's fantastic. That's coming up in September. That's going to be a full day where people okay. can have lunch and everything. Um, and I'm looking into potentially developing all of those into um, a contemporary art group later in the year that's going to happen potentially after the pop-up cafes finish okay at the end of october um are you quite arty yourself then having well, this sort I, of getting am, the kids yes. to draw and um yeah. so you fit that into your all that time that you have <laughs> 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 well i i come from an art background because i i i'm an art uh, i i did an art degree when i was a mature student from the back of a project that i did which was run by uca and turner contemporary back in 2008 okay 
Um, and obviously I worked as part of the learning team at Turner Contemporary. And so I can see the benefits from being a creative, yeah. from a creative standpoint for people's well-being. But also there are lots and lots of things going on locally in my area. Yeah. Certain dancing groups, local 50s club. Um, there, there's lots and lots of different things that are going on. So the reason that I wanted to set up the pop-up cafe is to help disseminate all of that opportunity to people that come yeah. for the tea and cake. Also, I invite people along from sort of Kent Fire and Rescue, the uh, Kent, uh, Canterbury City Councillors, um, Age UK, uh, Victim Support. So they representatives from there sometimes come along and well, as well and sit and drink tea yeah. and eat cake. But also they're sharing. I've had someone from Red Zebra, uh, Zebra who came along and sort of discussed what social prescribing is. Okay. Um, so it's quite interesting doing a bit of work around um, the day-to-day -day stuff, which is supporting people in... Yeah. Um, in the I get reports for things about potholes, over, overgrown vegetation, issues, you know, ongoing yeah. things. But also it's really nice to have the freedom to spot something that might be quite nice yeah. um, and then run with it. And I suppose that's what makes every community warden that we have in all the communities mm. across Kent so unique is that they will have their own take on on something and interpret a, um not a solution but an activity yeah. or a project yeah. that's going to be of benefit so no no two community wardens will ever do exactly the same no, things exactly. in their communities which is wonderful it is wonderful and it makes the it makes the role exciting and interesting um but also it really maximizes the uh, backgrounds of the wardens and, and what they bring to the, yeah. the table. Well, yeah. I think it's been brilliant. And I think as well, with your network, we're going to get some uh, different uh, groups to come in to the community show to tell us mm. about what they're, they're up to. So we'll definitely stay in touch. And I want to say it's been, it's, I've really loved talking to you and finding out more about what you're doing. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. And I just want to make the point that we, we are there to support everyone wherever we can, but we also want to try and empower people to make sure that they've got the tools. That yeah. If they do need to do something that they are in the, you know, in the position that they feel they can. Yeah, no, that that's brilliant. So we're going to uh, be uploading the podcast. We'll put the relevant links into the community warden section on the KCC website so people can find out more. I just want to say... Thank you so much for coming in.